We are the Gujarat Technological University. Since its inception over a decade ago, GTU has been empowering young and curating minds to realize their true potential. Over 4 lakh inspired students are enrolled with one of the premier academic universities in India. With more than 450 affiliated colleges in its fold operating across 5 zones of the state, GTU, the International Innovative University, your place to move forward. Dear students, I'm Dr. Madhvi Desai, Head of Computer Science and Engineering Department from RNG Patel Institute of Technology, Institute Code 084 and Zone Code 05. Today, I'm going to cover demand paging topic from the unit sets of the subject operating system. Subject code is 3140702 and the semester code. So this is a very important topic that I'm going to cover from the operating system. So first of all, what is the demand paging? And uh, what is the need of it? Okay, so first, bring the page into memory only when it is needed. If there is no demand page, in what we need to do? Okay, we all know whenever we want to execute any of the program, uh, we want to execute any of the process. What we need to do? We need to uh, uh, we need to bring the whole process into the main memory. If we bring the whole process into main memory, then only we will be able to execute that particular process. So that is the first and most important criteria when we are talking about the memory management. We all know. But what if the process size is very large and we don't have that much enough space available into the main memory? Then what is uh, what is the result that we will not be execute uh, that particular program or that particular process? Okay, so what is the alternative solution available? So alternative solution is demand paging. So what we can do, bring the particular page into memory only when it is needed. We will not bring the whole program or the whole process into the main memory. We will bring the page only when it is needed. So what is the result of that? Less input output needed, less memory will required. It will have the first response and the more users can execute the more processes at the same time. Okay, so page is needed. We need to reference it. So first we need to find out, okay, we need to uh, say that load M1 means I want to uh, load the particular uh, memory that is the uh, uh, particular register M1 or the particular page P1. So what we need to do a uh, reference, okay. Now what will happen when we bring, we try to reference a particular page, there are, there are two options, either invalid reference or the valid reference. So we, if there is a valid reference, it means that that page is already in memory and we will be able to execute. But again, we, when we are referencing, it, it may happen that that page is not available. So invalid reference, page is not at all available into the main memory, page is not available into the secondary memory, page is not exist right now. So what will happen that we need to avoid that particular process. But if not in main memory, it means that right now page is not available into the main memory, physical memory. But actually it is exist into the secondary memory. So what we need to know, we need to bring that page from secondary memory to main memory. So this is a task that we need to do when we are referencing a particular page which is required. Okay, so again I'm telling what is demand paging. So whenever we are executing any of the program, it becomes the process. When we want to execute any of the process, okay, we need to bring the whole process into the main memory. Then only we will be able to execute that particular process. But what if we don't have the enough space available into the physical memory? So what is the result that we will not be able to execute that process because we don't have enough space available? So what is the alternative solution? Alternative solution is that we need to bring that process. Uh, what is the alternative solution? That process is made up of number of pages. Okay. Now what we will do? We will bring the page when it is required on. So when that page is demanded, then only we will bring that page into the main memory. So what is the result? What is the benefits of demand paging? That less input output required, less memory needed. Uh, it will have the faster response. More user can execute the multiple processes at the same time because of the demand paging. Now when we are referencing, when we require the page, we need to reference that load this particular page. Now if that page is available in main memory, there is no problem. 
but if page is not available into the main memory there are two possibilities that that page is not available into the physical memory but it is available in secondary memory so what we will do we will bring that page from secondary memory to the main memory but what if that page is not available into the secondary memory even so we need to avoid the process okay so what is this uh, valid and invalid bit that we need to understand when we are talking about the demand paging okay so with each page table okay for each uh, for each process we have the page table with each page table entry uh, we have we valid and invalid bit associated one we are, uh, one means that the page is in memory zero means that page is not available into the memory so this is the one example that we have considered invalid initially valid and invalid bit but is set to zero on all the entries okay at this initial position all the valid invalid bits set bit sets to zero why because initially no page is available into the memory when the page is required in demand paging at that time only we will bring that page into the memory and we will set that uh, valid invalid bit uh, to the one okay so initially all the bits are zero okay so this is an example of one particular page table so during the address translation if valid invalid bit in page table entry is zero we considered it is a page fault okay so page fault means that we are referencing a particular page and that page is not available into the main memory that is known as what page fault now page table when some pages are not in main memory so this is again example so this is the logical memory we have the different eight pages this is the page table so you can see here that uh, page a okay page 0 content is what a okay now in page table we have the frame and we have the valid and invalid bit so what you see here 0 4 4 means what this particular uh, page 0 is available into the frame number 4 okay in frame number 4 we are saying that it is a valid bit it means that page is available into the physical memory if we are talking about the page 1 we don't have any frame number and it is an invalid it means that this particular page is not available into the physical memory so not available into the physical memory so it may be available into the secondary memory or may, may not be available okay so that is the page table when pages are in memory and some pages are not in memory so uh, as i already discussed but again what is page fault so if there is ever a reference to a page first reference will track to operating system that is known as page fault so as i told you a particular process is made up of for example eight pages whenever i required a particular a particular page i will reference that page if that page at the initial position that page is not available into the physical memory because the first time we required this page so it will track to operating system and it is known as what page fault so in a simple word page fault means we required one page that page is not available into the memory it is known as page fault so what will we do when we track to the operating system os will see at another table okay now os need to decide that what are the two alternatives as i discussed okay it is an invalid reference or just not in physical memory if it is an invalid reference means that page is not at all available in secondary memory also then we need to abort that particular process otherwise just not in memory means page is available but right now it is not available into the physical memory so we need to bring that page from secondary memory to main memory from back end to the main memory so when we are talking about this thing uh, means i need to bring that page from the back end to the main memory what are the steps required first of all we need to find out an empty frame in which i will bring that page swap that page into that empty frame we need to reset the page table means that invalid bits invalid bit that is we need to set as valid bit equal to one and we need to restart the instruction so what are the steps in handling a page fault okay so when we are talk, talking about the demand paging uh, two things will happen that either page is available into the main memory or either page is not available into the main memory so if page is not available it is known as patch page fault and when there is a page fault which are the steps we will require to execute so let's see this first of all we need to reference the page which is required so load m 
so load amp instruction says that we need to bring that page amp into the memory so what is the first step we are referencing to the page table that load amp okay so we are trying to identify this frame number but we are saying that valid invalid bit set is i now i means that either that page is uh, when there is an i what will happen what is the next thing it will track to the operating system now what operating system will see check operating system will check into that his own table that page is not at all available or page is available it is but it is in the backing store so if it is in not available it will abort but if page is available but it in backing store then it will go to the backing store and identify the location of that particular page now what we need to do as that page is required to execute we need to bring in memory so we need to bring that missing page into the physical memory so we will try to find out in a physical memory we will try to identify the free frame so if this is a free frame okay what i will do i will bring that swap that page from secondary back uh, backing store to the main memory now once this page is available into this memory so we need to reset the page tables so we will uh, set i to b so now this is the valid page once we have that page is available into the main memory we restart the instruction so when we have swap uh, when we have reference and it was step we have actually here uh, we need to restart that instruction again from that step only so we will restart the instruction so these are the six steps available in handling the page fault okay so what happens if there is no free frame so here uh, you can see that we are identifying that page is available into the backing store we need to bring that page into the secondary memory uh, from secondary or backing store to the main memory into the free frame but what if free frame is not at all available into the memory then what we need to do okay so this is about this page replacement find some page in memory but not really in use then swap it out so we need to do a swapping okay when we are referencing a page and that page is available in the backing store we need to bring that page from secondary backing store to the main memory into the free frame but what if free frame is not at all available okay so we need to make the frame empty okay whatever the frames available from that we need to identify one victim frame and in that frame i need to make it empty so what i need to make it empty means what from that free frame uh, from that frame i need to identify a victim frame and from that frame i need to swap out that page from main memory to the backing store okay so that frame is going to be empty and into that empty frame i will bring that particular demanded page so that is explained here page replacement find some page in memory but not really in use swap it out so how we will identify that uh, some page so for that there are so many algorithms are available which is known as page replacement algorithms okay so that is the next topic so from that page replacement algorithm we need to select any one and performance one ten algorithm which result in minimum number of page faults so as i told you there are so many algorithms are available to identify this victim page okay so uh, which algorithm we should execute so we need to identify the algorithm which is having the least amount of page fault that we can say it is the best algorithm so same page may be brought into the memory several times it may happen okay so what is the performance of demand paging okay so to calculate the performance of demand paging page fault rate is zero less than equal to p less than equal to 1.0 p is equal to 0 means there is no page fault means page is already available into the main memory no need of any other action if p is equal to 1 means every reference is a fault okay if every reference is a fault then p is equal to 1 so effective access time to calculate the equation is 1 minus p so p is either 0 or p is either 1 into memory access okay so p is equal to 0 means no page fault so one into memory access time plus p means if there is a page fault okay what we need to calculate page fault overhead plus a page fault overhead so what is page fault overhead so that is the swap page out swap page in restarting of the instruction all those time we need to calculate when we are considering that 
page is what page quality is there so when we are calculating about effective access time in demand paging one minus p means there is no page fault into memory access time plus p for that if any reference is there where is there is a page fault so page fault overhead we need to calculate that is the swap page out swap page in plus restarting the instruction all the time we need to consider when there is a page fault so that is about the performance of the demand paging so let me revise the whole uh, lecture we have seen about the demand paging so that is available uh, that is of the unit 6 of the memory management topic so demand paging why it is required when we want to execute any of the pro program we need to bring that program into the main memory if that program size is very large and we don't have enough space available into the memory then we will not be able to execute that program so we need to identify any of the other solution so what is the other solution that is the one of the solution is demand paging so what is demand paging demand paging says that whenever the particular page is required at that time only we need to bring that page into the main memory so that is known as the demand paging now when we are calculating about considering about the demand paging there are the number of steps available so the first step we need to give a reference so if i am saying load m i need to check into the page table that page is uh, valid or invalid if it is a valid it means that page is available into the physical memory so i will bring it and execute the instruction but if that page is not available it is set as what invalid bit invalid bit is there it means it will trap to operating system operating system will check that that page is avail uh, that page is not at all available into the secondary memory also or that page is available but right now it is not available into the main memory. if there is a first option means not at all available then we need to stop it will uh, stop the execution of that process abort it but if page is available into the secondary memory it will identify the location of that particular page we need to bring that page from uh, backing store to the main memory into the empty frame once it is available into the empty frame we will swap in then we will reset the page table that is invalid to the valid bit and we will restart the instruction but another problem may, may uh, arise that what if free frame is not at all available so if free frame is not available then we need to identify one page which is not mostly used into the uh, which is which can swap out from main memory to the secondary memory so how we will identify that which we, which page we need to uh, Uh, swap out from main memory to the secondary memory so there are so many algorithms are available which is known as page replacement algorithm now how we will say that which page replacement algorithm is better so we need to see the performance so performance is what it based on the number of page fault if there are high number of page fault then that algorithm is not good but if the algorithm is executing with the minimum page fault then we can say that algorithm is good okay so that is about we are bringing that page from uh secondary memory to the main memory uh, and we will execute it so this is about the de uh, demand paging and we need to calculate effective access time of the demand paging that is 1 minus p means if there is a no page fault into memory access time but if there is a page fault then we need to calculate another other overhead also that is what time for the swap out time for the swap in restarting the instruction all those time also we need to calculate when we are calculating effective access time of demand page thank you very much dear students uh, from rngpit gtu fan